So let's talk about mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Also could be called the amount of atoms in an object because all things that are matter are made of atoms and those atoms are what give the object mass. A small mass has a small number of atoms. A large mass has a large number of atoms. It doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the volume, the size, how, how much space something takes up. It's how many atoms are packed into whatever the space is that gives us mass. So, what are our units? The base unit is the gram, little g. He's just a little gangster. The uh, large unit is the kilogram. We add kilo to it. It means a thousand grams. And our small unit is the milligram. Um, so if we add milli to something, it means one thousandth. So milligrams are one thousand times smaller than a gram, and a gram is a thousand times smaller than a milligram. Grams are used to measure things like how heavy your milk jug is, or how heavy a chocolate bar is, how heavy your crackers are. So we're going to see that one a lot in science class. Kilograms are used for like how heavy is a person or a dog or a whale. We're not going to see those ones so much as far as the measurements we'll take in class. Milligrams are more for things like medicine and our tools in class can't use those either. So we're really only going to use grams in this classroom. But if you see milligrams or kilograms, you should be able to recognize their masses. So how do we use a triple beam balance? That's our tool. Um, it's called the triple beam balance because, you know, it has three beams and it balances. So there you go, triple beam balance. So now, how do we use a triple beam balance? First step, we got to make sure that our triple beam balance is at zero. So if we notice here, there is a zero on this side. So we need to slide all of the slides over to zeros and then make sure that this little guy here is at zero. So that is indeed the case. And now we can move on and start our measurement. Step two, we need to place our object on the tray. And Archimedes has volunteered to be our object for today. Once we have our object on the tray, step three, we need to move the weights until we achieve balance. It's important to note that all the weights need to click into place and be pointing at the number in order to ensure accuracy. So let me pull this bad boy up here so that you can see what we're doing just a little bit better. So we're trying to get our thing to go down to zero. So if I move the 100 slide, looks like Archimedes weighs at least 100 grams. If I go to 200, oh look, he's not quite 200. So I'll cruise back here and then slowly do this here. 30 is good. So 50 is too much. 40 is about right. So now we're at 140 and then we're going to tap this little slide over here, our one gram slide, until it balances, which sometimes takes a little bit. So we'll give it another tap and another little tap here. All right, so sometimes this is the part that feels like it takes forever, but once it's done, the last part is our easiest part. We're going to add up all of the bars and record our data. So if we notice here, we have 100 plus 40, and then at the bottom here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So these are our single digits. And then there's 10 little slashes in between each one. So those are decimal points. So we have 144, and then we're one slashy over from the four. So this is 144.1, which we would record.
on our data tables as, see this here, yeah? Okay, 144.1 grams, okay? And that's what you would put on your data table. Easy as cake, then the next one that you need to do, we just put a new object on and do the process all over again. Keep in mind that as we go along, these arrows need to be pointing at the number down below them. All right? You can hear it when it clicks. So here, arrow is clicked into this spot, and then these ones are tenths. So how do we find the mass of a liquid? We obviously can't pour the liquid onto um, the triple beam balance because it'll just go everywhere. So we need to um, come up with another way to do this. And some of you might be thinking, duh, I got this already. But just in case, uh, we will throw it out there. So the first thing that we need to do is find the mass of the container. So we're gonna take our container, plop it on our triple beam balance, um, and just like last time, we're looking for it to balance. This guy does not have a mass of 100, so we'll click it out this way. Looks like he's gonna be somewhere in the neighborhood of 50, but he's probably, oh man, is this gonna do it? I never get this lucky. Hey, this bad boy weighs exactly 50 grams. That is going to make our afternoon a lot easier. Okay, next we need to put the liquid in the container and we are going to find the mass of the liquid and the container. This is a lot of steps. I don't want to do this. It's not fun. It's okay. It won't hurt that bad. We don't have to reset because we know the container already weighs 50. So we're just adding the mass of the water to it. So we're at 100 grams. So we're going to go ahead and slide that here. But not quite 110. So that means we're going to have to use our 10 slides. So here's 101, 102, 103, 104, 5, 6, 7. And let me slide you this way just a hair. I think we're about there. So this is 100, no 10s, so 107. And then we need to count our little slashies. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So we're gonna call this 107.2. So we have 107.2 grams minus 50.0 grams. Um, and we're gonna do some subtraction here. So we're gonna get 50, 7.2 grams and that is what we would record on our data table is this measurement because to record this measurement would be inaccurate this is the container and the liquid we just want the mass of the liquid